started working on this drafting table thing, I thought maybe some of the top might be salvageable. Um, not even close. I think that's some kind of a laminate or something that was on top up on here. But it rusted. And when it rusted, it, it took everything with it. You can see here there's termite bug damage in the wood. So that kind of explains why it's in such shape that it is. I'll get this. Uh, this top looks like it might come off. Maybe I can screw a piece of plywood to it and uh, maybe reuse some of this edging. Uh, maybe not, though. This is that... Uh, well, maybe I'll use some of the edging. I, I took the screws off of this, and I'll pop that edge off and see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how the rest of this goes. The interior drawers, I mean, they seem in pretty good shape. So I, I could probably use it for what I intended. That damage didn't get that far down, but uh, I think it sat outside for just a little bit too long. Rain just stopped, heading outside to get back in, just open the garage door so I can make my way in, and I'm spooking the, the does, and yeah, they're just wandering off, so yeah, good times. Well, I guess when you have some of the best grass in the neighborhood, <laughs> I don't know, but the deer are back, hanging out, at least this time I'm in the house, so I'm not spooking them quite as much. But there is quite a herd moving across the lawn. It didn't count, but that's, what, five or six at least? So for those wondering what it's like to live in rural America, well, this is it. Don't plant anything that they like, <laughs> if you like that plant. Um, but yeah, I enjoy seeing them roam through here on a daily basis. That one spotted something. Not me. <laughs> Gorgeous. God is such an awesome creator. I just got back from one of the guys from men's group got a lot of the pavers I got probably another pallet like this red one that I need to go pick up I don't know if I'm gonna be able to drag all of these off of here I guess we'll see Karen's gonna help <laughs> All right, these two pallets may not look very different, but the one here is lighter than this one here. This one's a heavier oak type of pallet. This is a cheaper pine, lighter pallet. This one I struggled to lift. I, didn't, I guess my phone ran out of space when I was recording, but that one I struggled to get off of the trailer. That one came off okay. And then I slid this one forward and I'll get that one offloaded and uh, moved over into the pile of stuff. So there you have it. I want to point out when I'm lifting things, 
that leverage has everything to do with it when you this is a bx 23s it's la 340 is the loader on it and it's just can't lift a whole lot of weight about 600 ish pounds is what it is they say it's the 340 doubled so that's what 680 but you also have to remember that that's all of the weight so the pallet forks have some weight to them too and the pallet and so forth but anyway um so i need to get up as close as i can to whatever i'm lifting and it would have been better had these um pavers been a little closer this way would have given me a little bit more leverage but i'm right at the limit of what i can lift with the tractor so you're at the limits like that on these little tractors you have to remember to use every advantage that you can so getting the the load as close to the hydraulics as you can as close to the lifting point and uh right now i only have the let's see if I can walk over here i only have the box blade on there and the box blade isn't quite as heavy as the backhoe so i'm actually a little light I, i'm realizing i probably should put some wheel weights on it just to get that to settle a little bit Kubota did a really good job of designing the tractor. It really won't lift anything more than it is capable of. But when the back end is light, I can lift more. And if I'm rolling forward and hit the brakes hard, it'll actually nose over. And if I'm turning or on a bit of a slope, uh, that can be pretty dangerous. It'll roll the tractor over pretty quickly if I have the weight or the load high. So be careful when you're using these little tractors and uh, just use some common sense. a little bit of hydraulic fluid on the floor and I realized that uh, this nuts come loose so I gotta go grab a wrench and tighten that but uh, yeah it's never-ending if I don't do it now I'll forget this guy is like really loose too so I gotta see if I can get up in there and why is he so loose what the world happened here Yeah, I knew I should have grabbed the right wrench, but uh, this will do the trick. Get him. Okay. Let's see if these others have wound themselves loose. That went a little bit. I wonder if I just never actually got those tight. 
hopefully that stops my leak and those are good because in order for me to get the wrench oops, in on these, the solenoid's in the way. So I'd have to pull the solenoid bracket off to get those, but hopefully that solves that problem. Ah, <sighs> good times. And there was Miniland, Bill and Con. It was kind of fun. Gotta try it. I gotta walk out and get the mail. But uh, I realized I've got a bunch of little clips again from this week's sessions. One of the topics that's a little choppy is we're starting to do some more of the blacksmithing stuff. I ordered a bunch of railroad spikes so we can practice with. But uh, I knew I had a digging bar that I had bent, oh gosh, back when we were in California. And I've, I tried hitting it with a sledgehammer to straighten it. It's, it's not going to straighten. Digging bars are pretty, pretty funny that way. So had a vise, and I needed a place to put it. I was going to try and put it on the merchandise cart that I had gotten from Disney. I thought it was a Formica top. And so I set the vise on there. It was seemed really sturdy, like a good place to, to mount this thing. And I started trying to drill into the Formica top, and I'm like, oh, this is stone. <laughs> so kind of had to ditch that idea. I didn't have any other good place. They say a vise is supposed to be about elbow height for a proper, whatever, proper mounting. I don't have anything that would have really been suitable, so... I had an excuse to go buy a welding table. So Cody helped me put the welding table together. Got that at uh, Northern Tool out here. And then uh, tried to figure out how to mount with the welding. Welding tables have a bunch of holes in them. So um, actually made it out to the mailbox. Let's see if I can juggle all this stuff in the camera. Um, where was I? So, tried to figure out where to mount the camera, or not the camera, I'm holding the camera, where to mount the, the vise. So, <clears throat> finally got some of that sorted out. I'm going to have to drill some holes and get some different bolts and washers and such that all fit where exactly where I want it. But anyway, we got that together so I could hold the digging bar in a vise. And with the digging bar held, I could use the rosebud, which is a, a heating torch. So you'll see a clip of Cody helping heat that uh, digging bar up. And then I take a whack at bending it. We got it close. It's not perfect. It's one of our first, I guess, blacksmithing exercises. So that was kind of fun. We'll get more and more into that as time goes on. But that's the story behind uh, that clip you'll see. Anyway... See if I can come up with some other fun things and uh, get this posted. Keep it going, move it around a little bit. You want that whole thing red. Uh, okay, no, I know. There is the vise and the welding table. And we did an okay job. You can see where we heated that. There is some uh, crookedness to that, but it's way better than it was. It was probably should have grabbed a picture of it before I went through and tried to straighten it. It had a pretty good, like a 30 degree bend there where I had bent it. But anyway, much better now. And uh, now I have a good solid spot for that. So you can see kind of where I was talking about. I need to drill a hole for some of these bolts. That one's a little small, but it's what I had and what would fit there. So we'll get that worked out. And uh, the nice thing about this is I can level it with the leveling wheels if I need to. So, of course, as I've mentioned a few times before, the, the guy who did the concrete work here, never recommend him, but uh, the floor is from one end of the shop to the other, one foot 
down. So on 69 feet, there's a one foot drop in this. So makes a really good drain to the other side, but it's gonna make a lot of the projects I have coming up really challenging. I wanna mount the anvil on a tree, uh, the bottom, it's a tree round, tree trunk, if you will. But uh, in order to do that, you're, well, I need to have a flat base for that to go on. So to plane it, I need it to know where level is. So I'll have to set the tree trunk unlevel so that it, you know, the bottom of it, like stick wedges on it, under it, so that the top of it's level. And then I can get that marked up and then plane that. Then I can get a, an anvil mark, mounted on that. But so frustrating when the floor isn't level and you're constantly trying to figure out how to compensate for that. It's going to make a lot of the tasks in the shop just more time consuming. Yeah. Uh, seems like I'm always coming out and disturbing the girls with their dinner. But uh, yeah, they're back. Anyway. Well, thanks for tuning in. I know it was a little jumbled again. We had some videos from The Gathering, which was the musical piece you saw, and so forth. So that's what that was about. I went to see um, Villain Con at Universal Studios uh, Orlando. So that was that clip, and saw the Berlin Wall. I There's no audio with that particular clip because uh, it's at the Hard Rock there at Universal Studios Orlando. And... They were playing some rock and roll music pretty loud, so I figured the copyright police would get me here on YouTube if I uh, didn't just mute that. Anyway, so that's the story behind that. So I had a lot of fun. We also, uh, this week, I didn't take any video, of, but we did a uh, resort tour at Walt Disney uh, Magic Kingdom. No, not Magic Kingdom. We went to Animal Kingdom. We did the Animal Kingdom Lodge and had uh, a breakfast at Boma and it's just phenomenal they've got the savannah there and then from there we drove over to animal kingdom did the uh, kilimanjaro safaris rode through that and then we went and saw a movie after that so we kind of had a full day of just out and about lounging around karen wasn't feeling super well she's getting a sore throat so uh, it was nice to have just kind of a, a chill day but boma was fabulous anyway thanks for tuning in stay tuned i'm going to try and get uh, some more content going the shop is almost done we're getting so close to getting the power in there and so i can start to set things up and arrange them but uh, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe do that it, i appreciate it if you have any comments about what's going on what you'd like to see more of or less of uh, that would help me out a lot too and uh, as always god bless and uh, see you soon